How does excess cholesterol cause a heart attack? Isn't cholesterol a good thing? After all, your body needs it to make important structures such as cell membranes and hormones. And what's the deal with LDL cholesterol? Why should I care if my LDL cholesterol levels are high? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley. Let's examine how high levels of fat transporters in the blood, otherwise known as ApoB-containing lipoproteins, can cause heart disease and stroke. Fats, such as triglycerides and cholesterol, are carried in the bloodstream wrapped in a protein coat forming what we call a lipoprotein. Having high levels of certain lipoproteins, such as very low density lipoprotein or VLDL and low density lipoprotein LDL can be very dangerous as it can lead to heart disease over time. Technically speaking, there's no such thing as good cholesterol and bad cholesterol because all cholesterol is essentially the same. It's a steroid and a type of lipid or fat. It's used as a structural component throughout your body and it's needed for life. The problem occurs when tiny ApoB containing lipoproteins carrying excess cholesterol invade the walls of your arteries. The accumulation of lipoproteins and the cholesterol they contain in the arterial wall causes atherosclerotic plaque over time. Let's take a step back. When you eat more carbohydrates than your body can burn as fuel, it's stored as fat. Some of this fat can be deposited in the wrong places, such as inside the arterial walls, as visceral fat deposits in the abdomen, or inside the organs, such as your liver, muscle, heart, and pancreas, eventually causing organ dysfunction. Think of fatty liver disease, which is seen, unfortunately, in about a third of the U.S. population, although most people with fatty liver disease are not even aware of it. You can think of the liver as a fat factory for your body, converting excess carbohydrates into fat molecules, which are then combined to form triglycerides for storage in the body. Your liver also makes cholesterol, which is another type of fat, which is used throughout the body to make cell parts and hormones that you need for life. So how does your liver get these triglycerides and cholesterol to the rest of your body? First, it has to assemble a protein coat that is able to travel in the bloodstream. Fats such as cholesterol and triglycerides cannot be deposited directly into the bloodstream because they do not dissolve in water. Think of oil droplets on a puddle of water. Your liver wraps one of these long apoprotein B or ApoB molecules around a glob of triglycerides and cholesterol to form a water-soluble lipoprotein called very low density lipoprotein or VLDL that can travel in the blood. So VLDL is the main transporter for those triglycerides and cholesterol leaving your fat factory or your liver. As VLDL travels through your bloodstream, more and more of those triglycerides underneath the protein coat are stripped away. A hormone called lipoprotein lipase lives inside the linings of your arteries and removes those triglycerides from the LDL particles so they can be used by the body. When some of the triglycerides are removed, an intermediate density lipoprotein or IDL is formed. As the IDL continues to travel throughout, throughout the artery, most of the triglycerides are eventually removed and the remaining lipoprotein is called a low density lipoprotein or LDL. It takes about six hours for VLDL to be transformed into LDL. An LDL particle is in the bloodstream for about 48 hours total. So 
an ApoB lipoprotein spends most of its life cycle as a low density lipoprotein or LDL. That's one of the reasons why it's clinically important when we measure LDL cholesterol because that's essentially the carrier that the cholesterol is with most of the time. After the triglycerides have been taken up by your body, most of the leftover LDL is removed from the blood by LDL receptor molecules on liver cells. Recall that LDL cholesterol carries a lot of cholesterol. Most cholesterol drugs in the market actually work by increasing the amount of LDL receptors on cells, thereby removing more LDL and cholesterol from the bloodstream. The problem occurs when some of these small ApoB lipoproteins invade the inner lining of the arterial wall and become trapped. Any lipoprotein that is small enough, meaning less than 70 nanometers in diameter, can penetrate into the lining of your arterial walls. This is an example of fat being deposited in the wrong places. Once inside the arterial wall, LDL particles are broken down or oxidized. The degraded apoprotein B and the outer coat of the LDL is recognized by your body's own immune cells called macrophages. The macrophages then digest the degraded LDL particles becoming cholesterol-laden foam cells. The foam cells then release substances causing chronic inflammation in the body. Your body then tries to fix this inflammatory mess by sending in smooth muscle cells and collagen to make the plaque stronger. As more, more LDL enters the arterial lining, increasing numbers of macrophages are sent in, causing more inflammation. More smooth muscle and collagen deposit on top of this fatty mess, making the atherosclerotic plaque grow in size. Eventually, the, pl the plaque may block blood flow or rupture, causing the blood in the artery to thicken and formed form a blood clot. So we are primarily concerned with lowering the number of these small cholesterol transporters or lipoproteins that are able to invade the walls of the arteries and become trapped there, eventually causing atherosclerotic plaque. The outer covering of these lipoproteins carries apoprotein B as a label or signal to other cells. The primary goal of any cholesterol-lowering drug is to decrease the number of these cholesterol transporters in the blood, not necessarily to lower the total amount of cholesterol in the body. It's the ApoB lipoproteins that cause disease by transporting cholesterol to where it doesn't belong, such as inside the arterial wall. Thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you.